Uh, good afternoon. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Um, if we could have the, the next slide, please. So I, I'm going to be giving a short update on the regulations set out there. It's an update from the, the first webinar that we did, as you may have seen, back on the 9th of April. We're now five weeks and zero haircuts on. And the purpose of this update is really to set out how the law has changed in that time. The same caveat as last time appears on that first page. Um, this is obviously not public health advice. It doesn't set out what you should do. It simply sets out what the law permits and prohibits. And obviously there's a civic duty to follow government guidance that falls outside of that. If we can go to the next slide, please, Andrew. Um, there's a requirement, as we're probably all broadly well aware now, um, to review the regulations every three weeks. And if any of the restrictions or requirements are no longer necessary for the specified purpose, there's a requirement that they're terminated. The specified purpose is set out there on the screen in italics. And what that means is any interpretation of the regulations will be judged against that purpose. Now onto the next slide, um, you can see the two instruments that have amended the original regulations. The first set came in into force on the 26th of March. They were first amended just under a month later on the 22nd of April. And the latest um, amendments came into force just yesterday at 11 in the morning. And what I'm going to be focusing on are the amendments to Regulation 6, which is effectively the one that says stay at home. So if we turn over onto the next slide, we can see one of the ways in which that has been amended. So the first uh, amendment to the scope of Regulation 6 relates to Regulation 6.1. Um, and it picks up on something that we discussed in the last webinar, in fact. So the original Regulation 6.1 was phrased, as you see at the top of the screen, no person may leave the place where they're living without reasonable excuse. And it was noted that plainly there could be circumstances where you leave with one excuse and that excuse expires. But you could still bring yourself within the protection of Regulation 6.1 if that happened. Plainly, that wasn't the intention of the drafters when preparing this legislation, and that um, lacuna perhaps has been sealed from the 22nd of April with the amendment you see there. So now the requirement is you, you may not leave or be outside of the place where you're living without reasonable excuse. It means if your reasonable excuse expires, you need to go home, plainly. Common sense, and obviously was always the intention of the draftsman. Um, on to the next slide, I want to look at Regulation 6.2. Um, and we're going to look at this in slightly more detail because Regulation 6.2 is the provision that lists a number of available reasonable excuses. Uh, the broad point is the scope of reasonable excuses that are specified in the, um, the regulations has been increased. But bear in mind, uh, of course, that the test is still that the reasonable excuse must include the need to do one of the specified exceptions. So the touchstones always do you need to do this necessity uh, or, or to guide you when considering whether the behaviour falls within or outside the scope of the exceptions. It's worth also bearing in mind that although this isn't an exhaustive list, plainly the longer it gets, the fewer exceptions are likely to be considered to be reasonable. I'm going to give one clear example a little later on of something that isn't specifically uh, counted as an exception in Regulation 6.2, but is plainly likely to be considered reasonable for other reasons. I'll touch on that later. So moving to the next slide to look at what has changed. So I've highlighted, it'll be fairly obvious, I've highlighted the changes since the original regulations and when they came into force. And there are two kinds of change really that have been made and some are simply tidying up and some are rather more significant and genuine relaxations of the measures. So in the first category, the tidying up, basic necessities now includes things such as depositing money or collecting goods which are being pre-ordered online or over the phone. It's obviously not a massive change. More significant, um, perhaps, is the extension to the ways in which you can take exercise. You can now take exercise not only on your own or with other members of your household, but with one member of another household. That harmonises Regulation 6 with Regulation 7, which prohibits gatherings in public 
of more than two people. And it's of potential significance at a basic level. You can now go on a bike ride or a run, play golf or tennis or, or, or whatever else with a friend from outside the household. On to the next slide. We have a potentially more significant, perhaps the most significant uh, for most people, relaxation in the restrictions, which is you are now permitted, expressly permitted, to visit a public open space for the purposes of open air recreation to promote physical or mental health or emotional well being. You can do that alone with household members or again with one member of another household. And that's enforced from yesterday, it's been relatively widely publicised. But just to look at the nuts and bolts of that in a bit more detail, public open space means a public garden or a recreation space or open country or access land. It doesn't mean someone's private garden with a front or, or, or back garden. The advice, of course, remains practice social distancing even in such scenarios. We know that the advice is that that, that is a two metre distance that we're supposed to be maintaining between individuals. Um, that's not, in fact, enshrined in the regulations, but plainly common sense, good advice and, and what we're supposed to be doing to protect public health. But, but you can, one way or another, now meet a friend in an open space for purposes other than just exercise. Well, what might those purposes be, you ask? We go over the page, the next slide, to consider what recreation means. On the face of it, it's an ordinary English word, of course, rather like alert, participate, gathering, other words that are used either in the regulations or the advice. We know what they mean. We can judge our behaviour with reference to them. And plainly, it's deliberately wider than the use of the word exercise in the regulations. Otherwise, that would have simply been trans transposed. But it's not defined in the regulations. And so just a bit of recreation. I suppose I had a look at the dictionaries to see if they helped us. The Collins tells us that recreation consists of things that you do in your spare time to relax. Merriam-Webster tells us that synonyms include dalliance, frolic, frolicking, fun, fun and games, play, relaxation, rollicking and sport. So effectively it can mean pretty much whatever you want it to in terms of outside activity. Bearing in mind of course you're supposed to be staying two metres apart from the person that you are um, frolicking with. So that's always uh, something of a caveat. Um, but um, perhaps interestingly here, need is defined for the first time in the regulations with specific reference to promoting physical or mental health or emotional well-being. And what that means essentially is um, if you need to get out of the house because you're feeling claustrophobic, as many no doubt will be, or feeling lonely, or have been annoyed by drilling outside your house or the neighbours hoovering and so on, that would seem to come within the scope of this. You, you could now engage in outside recreation. You could meet a friend, for example, at a distance of two metres for a chat in a park, and that would now be permitted. It wasn't before. And in the context of the regulations, and we've all got used to this idea that um, we give over this power to the state and we all stay inside at all times. But, and, but in the context of the regulations, that's quite an enlightened and humane um, provision. Um, uh, over the page um, to some more of the, the amendments to the regulations. So um, a further technical um, exception, a tidying up amendment really. Um, previously, you could travel in to work, um, but you couldn't actually do any work while you were there. Well, that's been, that's been clarified so that now you can both get to work and actually do something when you get there. Um, something which no doubt um, anyone who is actually applying the regulations already knew nonetheless the drafting's now caught up with the intention. Perhaps more seriously and more significantly, again sensitively, um, you're now permitted to visit a burial ground or garden of remembrance to pay respects to either a member of your household, family member or a friend. That's been in force since the 22nd of April. Um, over onto the final slide dealing with the Sec Regulation 6.2 exceptions and two further amendments of potential significance. Um, one is that the scope for undertaking activities in relation to moving house has been greatly expanded. Previously, you could only move house where reasonably necessary. 
and now you can engage in all sorts of ancillary activities such as visiting estate agents or visiting other people's properties to see if you wanted to buy their house. How many of us are going to be doing that at the moment is very much um, up for grabs, but it is now um, a permitted activity expressly within the regulations. And you could also now visit a waste or recycling centre subject to them having reopened depending on your local area. That's in force from yesterday as well. Before we leave this slide, there's one oddity perhaps and one obvious, um, uh, maybe obvious omission from the new 62 exceptions and that relates to garden centres. Um, it's been relatively widely publicised that garden centres are now back open and everyone cheering, not least the garden centres themselves, no doubt, um, about that. Um, that was done with an amendment to the, the schedule that prescribes sites that uh, can or can't trade under Regulation 5. But of course, it's very hard to make visiting a garden centre, if you think about it, fit within the Regulation 6.2 exceptions. Another basic necessity, perhaps, to buy a pot plant or compost or tomorite, um, depending on how bothered you are about your tomatoes. So what's the answer to that? The answer is, of course, that Regulation 6.2, the list of permitted exceptions, is not exhaustive. And so I'd suggest the clear consequence of reopening facilities such as garden centres is that you're permitted to visit them for the purpose of shopping. Uh, and that would be a reasonable excuse for leaving the house. And that's the value of having the non-exhaustive list. There will be exceptions that aren't as expl explicitly set out in the regulations, but, but nonetheless, plainly common sense and likely to form a reasonable excuse. And uh, no doubt suggestions can be sent in on a postcard to the usual address if you can think of any others. Um, just two final slides now. If we go over to the next one, Andrew. So this um, is a further amendment that relates to Regulation 6. Of course, breach of Regulation 6 is a criminal offence under Regulation 91B. And the police also have power to issue a fixed penalty notice. And the significant change, a potentially significant change, is the increase in the penalties um, relating to a fixed penalty notice being issued. It rises from 60 to 100 pounds now for a first offence, again halves if paid within 14 days, but again rises for second and subsequent offences to for a sixth fixed penalty notice for breach of Regulation 6, um, could be £3,200 um, if contested, of course, an unlimited fine is available. Um, policing by consent is very much the order of the day. It's unlikely that any of these, too many of these fixed penalty notices are, are going to be issued, one, one hopes not, but it's worth bearing in mind that the penalties for deliberate breach have now been increased um, in recent days. So the final slide. Those are the changes to Regulation 6 to date, relatively likely to be um, more to come as matters progress and there may be further updates. Hopefully um, one day soon I'll be able to speak to you um, talking about hairdressers, but um, uh, until then, um, stay safe, stay alert and um, frolic safely. Thank you very much.